right, guys, we're back uh, with the community questions. So uh, let's jump right into it. Um, first question comes from the user Hipster Puma, who asks, uh, did you expect this much fame? Um, no, no, uh, I, I don't really feel famous. Um, although th there have been a couple instances now that I think about it where I'm playing like MechWarrior Online, for example, and someone will be like, oh, Sonic Ether, Minecraft Shaders guy. And I'm like, yeah, that's sweet. That is kind of cool. <laughs> but I don't know. Um, I don't really feel famous. I mean, like I was saying earlier, I don't, when I tell people about my mod, they're like, no one I've talked to in person has like recognized it, been like, oh yeah, you know, so it's really just like an internet only thing and the internet's like a, you know, it's, you know, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that, but uh, I didn't. You know, I didn't I expect know. it to whatever degree I am known. I didn't. I didn't really expect it. As far as like, like getting things on IGN on the front page of IGN, like, did not expect that. That's craziness. But uh, yeah. Okay, I guess. I guess part of it is there's. It's hard to see that fame, right? That's what you were kind of getting at. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. that? Some people are famous, and some people are just like you see them as numbers, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just it's not like you know. Not if that I he gathered... doesn't love every single one of you, <laughs> ah, but, <laughs> but it's, if, it's hard it, to see it. Yeah, yeah. If I gathered all of my quote unquote fans, for lack of a better term, in like one grouping, I'm sure I'd feel kind of famous. But I just, I mean, for uh, for example, on Facebook, it, I'm almost to forty thousand. That's that's a lot of people. It's just it's just a number for me. I'm still sitting in my room alone, like, all day, n barely interacting with anyone. It's not really Sad. like a glamorous, don't, like, don't celebrity like life, that. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> so. so. All right, this is a question from Sneaky Mac. Will the three-dimensional volumetric clouds ever make its way back into the mod? Perhaps as in Uber version of Seuss or something similar? Uh, yeah, I, I did... Uh, referencing what I was when I was sort of speaking about that earlier um, it's a possibility if I get a more uh, modern graphics card and see how things have changed how things change uh, with you know the hardware and, and if newer hardware handles that effect better than the hardware I'm running right now I, I don't really have a way of directly testing that and I would really prefer to test that myself and you know if I enabled it for an uber version I think there are still always going to be people out there complaining that it just takes too much mm -hmm. uh, frame rate uh, why is it so slow you know or you, you could um, just call it minimal version so it <laughs> works best with minimal <laughs> yeah maybe I mean maybe it can put together like a version for screenshots or something that really ballsy people feel like you know they they if, if they feel like they've got a beast machine they can try to run it in real time and actually have gameplay with it or something like that. But so they can post I would on Reddit to... and get a bunch of karma. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the karma machine. I would. Yeah. <laughs> I would have to clearly to feel good about that. I would have to clearly um, convey to the downloader that it's for like super crazy NASA computers as people like to say um, yeah. I don't NASA doesn't have very good computers no the NASA computers are not to my knowledge they're not built for running video games <laughs> on you know OpenGL uh, anyway um, so remember um, if you got a spare Titan right, lying, like lying around somewhere in your room you can send it to Cody and he will use it. <laughs> Send one of your fifty Titans sitting on the shelves. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe if an Nvidia executive is watching this, you know, like mm -hmm. you, you uh, can help us. You, uh, you could help fly, me out as well. Fly Sonic out I, to I like the Nvidia conferences and have him speak. Just next time we do an interview, just stuff. just you know, um, wear a T-shirt with the Nvidia logo somewhere like here or something, mm -hmm. and some some 
graphics card lined up in the background that will that'll help mm -hmm. wear green and yeah. black exactly green and yeah. black <laughs> <laughs> and have the uh what is it the the six series mermaid on your background mm -hmm. 6800s remember mm -hmm. the 6800s guys no no okay wait what <laughs> Old that was the super like uncanny valley mermaid, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> it was from 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 which year? Two thousand four. Four, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. Sixteen hundreds, like the ultras and the GTS. That was back when GT was the go-to, like ultra. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. Those are old days. <laughs> oh, that was ten years ago. Oh gosh, you're old, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, yeah. Next question comes from comes from the user Percival ninety one, and he asks, "Could you perhaps release a shader pack that is optimized for low end laptops, video cards such as um, Intel HD graphics four thousand or other?" Uh, okay, so. I guess the short answer is no. Um, there are, there's are a few reasons for that. Um, <laughs> the long yeah. answer is no. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't Sorry. have an Intel graphics whatever <laughs> machine to test that on, and my mod is not really meant for super low end integrated graphics. I mean, it never really was. It's a. It, you know, it's about. It's an enthusiast mod, and um, and for those asking, the Intel HD four thousand is super low end. Super low end. I you mean, you can barely run Call of like Duty three phone. on it's it. It's like the speed of this phone, actually. Mm -hmm. you can yeah, you, yeah. You can't really expect that much out of you know out of that kind of hardware. So it wouldn't really be something possible for me. Um, but you know, as someone with a low end PC doesn't mean you can you cannot customize the visual experience of your your Minecraft game, you know. There are resource packs out there, of course, and then with MC Patcher slash Optifine you've got those light maps which can make a really big difference. And um yeah. you know, I actually um it reminds me I I put together a light map and a series of like sky and fog colors uh, for MC Patcher when right when 1.7.2 came out, but the shaders mode wasn't out for it. My friends all wanted to play and I wanted to play, but I didn't want to just have a completely vanilla experience. Mm -hmm. So I um, got a nice resource pack and then I, I, I put together a uh, light map that was more or less like supposed to be like overcast light because the way that Minecraft default calculates its lighting is, is similar to how it would be if it was overcast and mm -hmm. so i made the sky color like overcast and i tuned it to where like it would it would obey conservation of energy so where basically the lightest color on the ground is not brighter than the color coming from the sky um and then i tuned the fog for that and ended up actually looking really nice so you know it's that's easy enough to do if I feel like sharing that, maybe I might share that. You know, I might upload it somewhere, put it on my website or something like that, on my forum. Um, because it it did really, really enhance the look of the game for pretty much no cost. So that would be an option for people out there with, um, with low-end graphics cards. But as far as, like, making a version of my shaders for that, I, I just... I don't really, I don't really want to do that, so... Uh, if I can mention something, there are actually a lot of... Um, specially custom made shaders for low end um, systems. So I guess it doesn't really matter if the name is Zeus and then just, I know, some light version. I mean, you can just download any, um, any other light version because after all, it won't make that much of a difference, right? Because well, and from, from what I, from my experience, those light versions are probably not going to run very well either on their, on their hardware. I think. You know, it just that that hardware is just not meant to you know run a deferred rendering pipeline, which is what the shaders mod is for for Minecraft. It just doesn't have the uh, the memory bandwidth and and uh, yeah. So oh well. And for those who perhaps are into shaders but don't quite understand, can you explain what a light map is in terms of Minecraft? Because mm -hmm, it's meant yeah. to replace what's already built into the game. Yeah, thanks for um, bringing that up. Um, a light map is that's a 
optifine slash MC Patcher uh, functionality, um, where, and you can you can Google this. Google's your best friend. Just Google like Minecraft MC Patcher light maps or, or optifine light maps, um, and there are some good explanations out there. But basically, um, the light maps determine what color. Um, lighting the default lighting is in Minecraft regarding like torches and mm. skylight. Um, it, it you can control what color at what intensities and what daytime that is going to be via a light map, and it's a very very small cost to to render that. Um, so and a lot of uh, a lot of resource packs come with light maps, so. It's not like a rare thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and even Google. just, they can make a huge impact. I can't stress can. that enough. I've seen some resource packs, and they make a huge difference for a quarter of a frame per Especially second. Especially these um, mm -hmm. high res photorealistic ones, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, the... Assuming you use mid mapping, in which case, yes. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, you're gonna have a sparkle fest. Just <laughs> sparkles in your eyes, you know. Ring days asks, "How did you get into coding?" But I think that was kind of referenced before. Yeah, um, I'm. I I don't know if there's anything I can add to that. Um, not really. I mean, it, <laughs> I pretty much answered it all before. So, all right. See a question in our first part. Okay. Yeah. Um, next question from Ploop. Who asks, um, could you please make everything customizable, not through config files, but through actual tabs in game? Uh, for example, being able to turn off and on the volumetric clouds and the water shading. Okay, so for those of you who don't know out there, I am responsible for the shaders themselves. The shaders are what basically they tell your GPU what to do with the information sent from the CPU to the GPU. The shaders mod itself is sets that up for me. Um, it, it interacts with the CPU with Minecraft's code and sends your GPU information to render those effects, render the shaders. Um, anything in Minecraft's engine, uh, like GUI or anything like that, is all CPU. Um, so for me to have like a GUI with like menus and things you can turn on and off, that, that's a CPU side thing that would send variables to, to the shaders, to the GPU, and then the GPU could, um, could change that. Um, mm -hmm. honestly, so it's a little bit out of my hands. I'm not the one who updates and manages the shaders mod itself. That's Karyonix's job. Mm -hmm. Um... But, so, I mean, there, there's a couple of reasons why that hasn't been done. It's That's the primary reason. Um, you know, I've sit down and tried to figure out a way to do that efficiently. Um, it, that would just... I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just trying to find a nice way to say no. I, <laughs> like it just it's it's out of my hands and it's kind of complicated. Um, and I don't necessarily want to just expect Karyonix to to do something that complicated. You don't want to solve you know with the shaders mod. Right? Yeah, I don't, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. So. I don't know. All right. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. No okay. Way. Okay. <laughs> All right. So. The next question is from Five Pillar, and he or she or it asks, "What was the hardest part about coding your shaders?" Hmm. I would say the hardest, the hardest part of coding my shaders was really just the learning experience. Of it, because I didn't, I didn't go into it knowing how to program shaders. Really, um, it was just an experience of like 
really teaching myself, you know, using Google and looking things up I didn't understand and uh, piecing together information from various like blogs that I'd read and things like that. Um, and uh, learning the syntax and learning um, what my code turns into regarding the hardware, like what happens on the hardware on my actual computer with the code that I type in. Um, so that's, that's been the most difficult aspect of it. I mean, I would say if not that, um, it's been, it's been optimization, um, uh, sustaining image quality while, while being able to cut certain corners and keep things running fast. Um, that's, that's been a really challenging aspect of it as well. So, yeah. Next question comes from the user, um, stickman. 278 who asks um, do you think you changed the way the community shares screenshots forever forever uh, at least Perhaps. in reddit i guess <laughs> i mean another thing you could you could say has changed the way people share screenshots is chunky render which is awesome um is that really a screenshot though it's a rendering type of thing yeah it's yeah that's a good point i mean you I mean, know, if someone wants to semantics, share, I guess. But. Yeah, semantics. If someone wants to share an image of their world or their build, you know, they might use Chunky. There, there's various yeah. upsides and downsides. Obviously, Chunky doesn't do normal mapping um, or reflections or things like that. Um, well, it does do reflections, but it doesn't use specular maps. And as far as I know, it doesn't have a Fresnel effect, which is very important to reflections, which my reflections do. And uh, reflections Fresnel effect... <laughs> Yeah, it's very, very important for anyone who's chunky, curious. It's not something that Chunky couldn't do in the future. That's just... No, it's not something that it couldn't do. It's just something that it doesn't do. I, right. I mean, if I knew the creative Chunky, I'd be like, yo, why you know... Does it have Fresnel? Fresnel. <laughs> yeah. But does it have to? If it wants to look like good reflections... Oh, oh shit. <laughs> the fr okay. If, if, if Everything has Fresnel. If you want to look that up, Fresnel is F R E N F R E S N E L. We'll just yeah. we'll just blend it in, okay? <laughs> yeah, Fresnel. Everything has Fresnel. Absolutely everything. Um, Fresnel is very important. It's so cheap, 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 cheap. You know, we do it in real time. So anyway. I'm sorry, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not trying to bag Chunky. Chunky is a really, actually a really good tool for me to to see how something's going to look path traced in the game with, with real global illumination, so I can try to approximate that. Um... <laughs> what? <laughs> Did you hear the kitty? I heard the kitty. Oh, the kitty. Um, I didn't hear it. Anyway. Oh, there he is. <laughs> there he is. Oh, kitty! Please, please grab um, it and bring it onto the onto the screen, please. Just, just once. Because oh, it was the internet and cats, like. Oh. Oh, kitty! We <laughs> 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 would have to oh. crest. Oh, you can't hear me, right? Um, damn it. He should be in the in the video too. Cool. <laughs> um, so what was I saying? Chunky and cool. screenshots. Yes. Um, I don't know. That was a tangent. Chunky's awesome. Amazing. Totally not bagging Chunky. Just my shared as mod does different things. So. But in the future, it's, it's certainly possible that Chunky could implement those, those type of things because it's Absolutely. not limited to something real time. Absolutely. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah. have to cut corners. Mm -hmm. Right, so to get back to the question, <laughs> yes, right, yeah, you did change the yeah, way community shares. I the suppose shares, uh, the screenshots. I mean, when I when I browse um, Planet Minecraft for a project or a world, you know that I it's always shaders, right? Yeah, yeah, I like to uh, I like to have different worlds other than just like the crap that I build or default Minecraft world terrain generation. You know, so I'll look on there, and a good deal of them are screenshots with uh, my shaders, but interestingly enough, a lot of them are old versions of my shaders. Maybe maybe people like the older versions just, more. Just I don't stop know. updating them. Well, I, th just, I just think... <laughs> give them think the old renew. Sorry. Part of it is, I know a lot of people who are pack rats, 
when it comes to Minecraft in general. Like they have their have their saves from 2010. I know people who still have like version four or five of your shaders. They have some of the early versions of Dax Nitro stuff. Mm -hmm. They have versions dating back to like forever. Maybe they mm -hmm. have it on tape drive or something. So it's more than possible that uh, instead of going to the source as far as getting the latest public release, they just found it from one of those people that has, you know, a huge server full of just random changers and stuff. Mm. Or, you know, there's, I get requests all the time for me to send people your shaders, which I say, they're public, <laughs> you know, just download them from <laughs> really? directly. But you they're, I've got, I get dishes. messages, I get messages about once a week saying, what shaders did you use for this? What did you use for this video, even though it's, it's in the title? Uh, uh. And, say, and I'll say, well, this, even, even just a couple days ago, someone asked me what shaders did I use for my version 3 remake. Sorry to get on a tangent, but um, I said, well, it's, it was like a six-month-old version of his version 10.1 that he gave me. He said, can you send it to me? It's like, one, I don't have it. And secondly, it's like coming out in five days or something, so just, just wait for mm -hmm. it. He commented back about three days later saying, so can you send it to me? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, uh, you yeah, so some, some, some people get, get their Minecraft stuff by person to person. So mm. even if even the latest thing is available. So that's Sorry. why I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, I told him, go download it from. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. <laughs> we'll find solution. I'm just kidding. <clears throat> now, now the, I have a question. Do you think, do you feel good in some ways that you change the way screenshots are taken forever? Or is that, you don't have much of an opinion on that? Do I feel good about it? Um, yeah, I guess. I, I mean, if That's there was anything out there that, that changed or improved the look of Minecraft to make someone's build look more appealing... Then that, I would think that's a cool thing, regardless of whether I am the one who created it or not, you know. Um, and it is, I feel a sense of accomplishment with it as well. So, so all the uh, dirt houses look even better now with the shaders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ambient <laughs> occlusion makes everything come to life. It does. Uh, <laughs> this is a question from, I'm going to assume you pronounce it, Miker. M1K3R underscore. Miker, do you have any plans of making another mod that changes the visual appearance of Minecraft in some way? Um, I was trying to think of a joke, but it I ran it through my head and it wasn't funny, so I decided not to say it. <laughs> okay. um, but basically, no. I mean... <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, there was there was one idea that I had where you know, it would basically add like a like a CPU voxel based uh, path tracing or ray tracing, um, but it, it's just a concept at this point. Um, and if eventually I did play around with that and get something interesting out of it, then I would append that to the shaders mod somehow. Either I would ask Karyonix for the source code and append it myself, or um, or have him do it, which I prefer having him do it because he changes. Well, he's an incredibly talented programmer in Java, and he does some stuff that I just don't understand. And like, mad props to Karyonix because he does some amazing stuff um, that I could not do. I'm I'm not super great with Java. Um, anyway, so. So kind of, I've had like I've had that idea for a little while, but but I don't know how fast or slow it would be, and if if it would be worth it to implement. You know, something else I've really wanted to experiment with is um, migrating Minecraft's lighting system from essentially a two dimensional array, which is which I mean the way that it is now is you've got two light sources, the sky and other stuff that glows like <laughs> fire torches glowstone all those things are combined and they they can only emit one color and i think it'd be really interesting to migrate that to an uh, an rgb you know intensity model where um different lights can emit different colors um 
So you could have different colored glowstone, different colored, you know, lava emits of like a redder color than like a torch. Um, I think that would be really cool. Mm. Um, and, and right now, the way that the shaders work is that they all have one color, right? Mm-hmm. So if you make if you make fire say more red, all those colors like glowstone and lava and torches yeah. all change color. Absolutely, yeah. So it would be really nice to be able to separate those things. Next question from user um, Megapixel Perfect who asks: Do shaders ever feel more like a chore than an enjoyable project to you? Sometimes, yeah. Um, when I'm working on it too much and I load it up and I just think it looks horrible and there's nothing about it that's right and 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 I can't find a way to make it look better I can't find a way to make it not look terrible that's when I know that I really need to need to step back from it and take a break and realize that that I've been working on it too much and that I'm seeing it in a biased manner Um, so it depends on how much I work on it. If I work on it too much, it does end up feeling like a chore, but, um, and, and I, I do feel that pressure of knowing that I've got a lot of people counting on me, you know, and sometimes that gets to me a little bit, but for the most part, I've learned how to deal with that and still enjoy it. Um, so it's mostly enjoyable, but it can it can be frustrating and it can be uh i can i can definitely get sick of it so all right well i, I guess you can apply that to making videos from uh, like with the shaders right so request yeah <laughs> um a lot of a lot of my most well famous videos are the only reason they happened was because i got a ton of inspiration in some way so all, all of my, all the projects that seem out of the ordinary or just like they lack a purpose are basically just because it's it's a passion project. And those I can work on nonstop for weeks at a time because like I have to get that out of my mind. But projects where it's, it's more traditional work, like I, I've wanted to do more review stuff that's the stuff where I'm sitting in front of Word for eight hours trying to, to bang something out. And eventually I cannot read anymore because I don't know what's even in the project anymore. When I'm editing or anything like that, it's just you look at something for so long, you don't you have to take a rest to get back to baseline to figure out where you are. Mm-hmm. That's why it's a lot of times nice for someone else to look at your project. I mean... In Cody's case, you need someone else who knows what they're looking for. But for someone like me, some you know, even just writing, sometimes it's nice for someone else to read it because they haven't been staring at it twenty four seven. So, yeah, I can right. definitely agree with with him. I can really relate to that too, as far as like getting outside opinions. Even if it's you know, I ask my roommates all the time, like, "What do you think looks better, A or B?" You know, because I I. Ultimately, my work is going, for the most part, to an audience that doesn't have that knowledge. They're just gamers. They just they see the shaders as you know graphics for a game, and they're just gamers. You know, my my buddies are gamers, and they don't you know they don't program graphics. So I value their opinion when when I when I'm when I feel like I'm seeing it in too biased of a manner. I'll ask my friends uh, for their opinion. So, the next question comes from uh, Hamp the Coolest. It's a very cool name. And uh, they say, Is there any possible way to get anti aliasing to work with your shader mod? Okay, so the thing about anti aliasing, it, de- it depends on what kind of anti aliasing you're talking about. Multi sample anti aliasing is the typical, like when a gamer thinks about anti aliasing, that's what they. That's probably what they're referring to. It's been around for years and years and years. Um, that involves adaptively sampling edges of polygons um, multiple times per pixel and averaging the samples. Um, the result is that you're getting more information of the scene 
on edges of polygons than you are on just flat faces where Which there is are where not edges. Where you're going to notice that exactly, difference. exactly. Um, so that's multi-sample anti-aliasing. Um, my shaders use a deferred rendering pipeline. Um, the the two are inherently incompatible um, because in a deferred rendering pipeline, you can't carry more than one channel of depth or normal information or color or any information about the scene. You can't carry more than one channel of that per pixel. So you can't carry like four four samples of that um, per pixel and then average them out later on. Um, it's it's the same for the same reason that uh, deferred rendering doesn't inherently handle transparency because it it really only only handles one layer of information and multi sample or multi sampling anti aliasing takes more than one tap or more than one sample of information. Um, if I decided to move to a forward renderer, which I have experimented with um, and haven't really talked too much about it um, because in some cases it's faster, in some cases it's slower, but it does have the benefit of handling multi-sample anti multi anti-aliasing and, um, <laughs> and transparency. Um, so... If I decided to migrate to that, you know, that would be a possibility in the future. Another possibility is super sampling anti-aliasing. I cannot speak, man. Um, super sampling anti-aliasing, which is basically rendering the scene at a multiple higher than your render resolution and then scaling everything down and averaging it out. So it but effectively kind of have that we have that already the shaders mod allows you to but it's perhaps I not think... as clear to someone who doesn't know what they're looking for yeah yeah the render resolution setting in the shaders and the options if you right. change that to times two that's super sampling anti-aliasing basically um and so that's that, scaling that is the total number of, of pixels right so yeah. onto one, one space the same so, space yeah <sighs> So what I'm saying is, so 2.0 means 2.0 per dimension, correct? Yes. Yeah. So that's why it's even slower than just half for some people. Yeah. Yeah, it is slower than half. It's um, squared. Squared. Yeah. Exactly. Pretty much. Um. So uh, yeah, um, that's a possibility currently, but it's very slow. Um, post processing anti-aliasing like FXAA, SMAA, um could be a possibility in the future um but i personally have never really been a huge fan of it um because it doesn't solve the problem for especially for things like aliasing regarding like shader effects uh like so like reflections mm -hmm. or aliasing regarding uh textures or aliasing where you've got a lot of like alpha um transparency uh so like leaves basically um mm -hmm. it almost makes flickering and glitter worse in those situations mm -hmm. um but like in the case of like a game with with really clean lines you know like if you're using a really low resolution texture pack um i keep saying that resource pack it might be a good option. So I need to invest the time in experimenting with that and seeing how much additional cost it's going to require. Just from a, a personal standpoint is that when <clears throat> without shaders, using full mip mapping and using even something like NVIDIA's Forest FXAA can make a huge difference because the mip mapping takes care of a lot of the texture flickering Mm -hmm. distance and for the most part the vegetation even though it's it's not as clean but the fxaa does a really good job just with you know just with the stuff that's obvious you know mm -hmm. i mean it, it's kind of a i don't know i guess it's kind of a toss-up between do i bring it in but it doesn't solve all the problems or do i not do anything and solve none of the problems uh i, I think that's what's going through people's <laughs> minds is that 
Why yeah. not have something that takes a very small impact that solves some of the problems? Well, the thing about that is that um, to implement that, I would need to add another sort of post-process rendering pass to the shaders, which in itself, even if I added nothing additional to that, is costly. Um, so I've got the additional overhead of that when I consider another pass as far as like another post-process effect. Mm -hmm. um, that's been the biggest reason why I haven't decided to do that, especially since people complain enough about performance as it is. Right. Um, and I'm already using four passes. I mean, so All right. to extend it further, you know, I don't know. I'm just going to have to experiment with it, really. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so next question, which two people asked in, this, uh, in the post, in the Reddit post, mm -hmm. were um, Staza85 and Fusion. And I'm pretty sure a bunch of other people are desperately trying, um, desperately wondering about this question, um, which is, will you ever bring back God Rays to Zeus? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, God Rays. Oh, I, I could spend a while talking about God Rays, but I'll... I'll I'll try not to. I'll try to sum it up. But um, God Rays, uh, I think the first game I, well, technically the first game with God Rays that I know of was Halo 1 for the Xbox, but it's very, very small scale. Um, it, it was it was just like a little bit around the sun. And if you played, if you played Halo. Oh yeah, I think I, I think I remember yeah. now. Yeah, it, it had a very, very, very small scale God Rays. That was, I think, the first, like, God Rays. And then uh, and then after that, I think it was the first Crisis game. Um, that really, I think Crisis is the game that made everyone go, Oh, God Rays, oh, you know, um, God DX10. Damn, it's, oh, it's what now, you know? eight years or something? It still looks amazing, like... 2007. Two th oh, yeah, 2007. Well, it still looks with mods and graphic mods. It still looks like a game that just came out this year. <laughs> Some yeah. people could argue that um, it looks better than Crisis Two, actually. So yeah, um, well, uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, that arguably, I mean, because Crisis Two was scaled down for consoles, yeah. I, I, they had to keep that in mind. Damn but consoles, anyway, consoles, just damn consoles. consoles. Crisis, Crisis Three, though, props to. Uh, yeah, for the developers. I can't that, even run it. That br that brought back. I can't run it. Yeah, it's so it's good. Too much. I have a full playthrough on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, so getting back to God Rays. Um, every game was just like, oh, we need to have God Rays. You know, we just need to have it. Let people love it. Got it. Got to do it. It's like it's like <laughs> selling sex in a music video. Like it was it was the sexy bitch in a bikini, <laughs> like of video games. Oh, same look with, at the God Rays. Same with Bloom, say. man. Yeah. yeah. Bloom has been just as abused as God Rays. But anyway, so getting to <laughs> what God Rays is trying to approximate is particles in the air picking up light and reflecting it. So like dust, uh, fog, smoke, or just the atmosphere. In the latter case happens on a very large scale in games that's completely disregarded. Um, another props to Crisis 3, they really got um, God Rays right this time because it's not God yeah. Rays, it's actually volumetric light. Um, God Rays is a 2D screen space approximation to this phenomenon. Um, and it's just, in my opinion, horrible. And I've removed it from my shaders mod because... because I personally don't like God Rays, but I am working on a solution to that that won't be the same as better, just a... Right? It'll be better. It's not a 2D post-process. Um, it's it's the real deal, the real volumetric the real light. Shit, guys. The it's real shit. Um, <laughs> shit is getting real. Um, I In my experiments, they've gone pretty well. It's not too slow. It looks pretty good. Um, but more on that when I'm ready to share it. 
So, are God Rays coming back? Kind of. God Rays, but but better. Much better than just God Rays. Yay. And I wouldn't call them God Rays at this point. I'd probably call them Crepuscular Rays, but... Or oh, well, volumetric that, that light. That needs to be a thing. That it needs to be. I'll, I'll post about that. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone was like, you got any more of them God rays? Like, crack addict. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> got any more rays, man? They want the <laughs> sexy bitches. Rays. Please. <laughs> I need them. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the next question is from Omega Decisive. And they ask... What happened to the sound reverberation mod you talked about a while back? Aha. Mm. Funny how life pretty much is like, how hey, you got a project you're working on. <laughs> not, you know, not so happening. <laughs> not happening. So I haven't worked on it in a while, but I basically passed the proof of concept stage with that. I got the rever reverberation working entirely. I got the sound occlusion working entirely. Um, really everything was pretty much set in place algorithmically. Um, my biggest difficulty with that mod is going to be getting it to be compatible with other mods because it modifies classes, but I don't really know how to do, uh, how to modify classes in a way that multiple mods can modify this, modify the same class. And I don't, I, I don't know about that. Karyonyx may be able to help me with that because He's made the Shaders mod compatible with other Forge um, mods. Just, just before you continue, um, um, could you please tell the guys, that, the people who are watching the video, that don't know about the mod, that, could you please just explain what it does? Oh, explain it. Thank you. That's a really good point. Um, I should have, <laughs> I should have thought of that. Like, oh my God, uh, what's, so, what's so basically, this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so basically, this this uh, mod is going to be a sound mod. Um, it will. Um, first of all, it fixes sound attenuation. Attenuation is how much energy a wave loses over distance so re regarding sound it's how much quieter a sound is the farther away you get from it minecraft by default uses a very unrealistic attenuation um for sound mm -hmm. um basically like if you're like 10 blocks away from a sheep you can't even hear it um so it fixes that f firstly um secondly it includes sound occlusion which basically means that um, and it's it's per block, and, and each block is going to absorb different amounts of sound and be able to transmit different amounts of sound. But basically, it casts a ray um, from the sound source to the player's ears, effectively. And if it collides with any blocks, it'll determine how many blocks it passes through, and it'll, it'll dampen the sound waves mm -hmm. based on how many blocks it passes through. So effectively, um, sound will get blocked if it's behind like a wall or something. Or if you're in a cave and there's a bunch of sheep sheep on the surface, you won't be able to hear the sheep because, you know, the sound can't travel through all that dirt. Um, but at the same and, time, if there was, like, a sheep on the other side of, like, a wooden wall, single, single a block single layer, wide, you'd exactly. be able to hear something because yeah. it's only yeah. one into one. Just, just yeah, it's going to be, like, muffled. Sorry. Just, just from hearing what the mod does, it's very interesting. I think if this really, like, becomes a thing and you can actually manage to finish the project and get it working, Mojang, Mojang might have interest in that. I mean, that's a neat feature, right? Maybe if they, they do, you. then awesome. Um, so the third shaders. aspect... <laughs> yeah, audio shaders, there you go. Um, there's one more aspect of the mod, and that is uh, sound reverberation, determined by what environment you're in. If you're outdoors, there's probably going to be a very slight amount of early reflections maybe based on any buildings around a, a little bit of an echo um but when you're in a cave um oh and, and each block is going to um absorb sound and reflect sound differently so stone is going to be highly reflective wool is going to be highly um absorbing um and uh when you're in a cave and you know it's closed off um if you're in a large cave you're going to hear a really long reverberation tail. Um, things that are farther away, you're going to hear less of the dry signal and more of the wet ambient oh, signal wow. bouncing around in the uh, cave. By the way, all these things I've gotten working, um, but it was sh simply a matter of um, writing all of the per block attributes. I hadn't gotten to that step yet, oh. so I hadn't written like how much sound each block is going to reflect or absorb. 
And then I also um, hadn't really just integrated it into gameplay for it to be completely seamless. Um, so, but it's pretty much well past the proof of concept stage. I just need to find the time with all the projects I'm working on lately to make it happen. But mm -hmm. I'm really excited about it. It's something I've wanted in Minecraft for a long time. And for my tests and my roommates testing it, um, you know, they agree with me in that it really does change the experience of Minecraft, um, especially when in a dark cave and you can hear like you can hear zombies in another section of the cave that you can't even see yet. Um, or like perhaps That's you can so hear, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sounds or so perhaps awesome. you can I hear like a just... zombie spawner wow. <laughs> behind a wall. You can hear the muffled sound of zombies. So it's, it's a really exciting, immersive, uh, gameplay, uh, addition, really, uh, interesting experience for the game. So I definitely really do want to find the time to finish that. And I'm glad that I was reminded of that because honestly, with so much going on right now, I've, I've kind of forgotten about it, but. But yeah, I, I definitely want to finish it. Oh, very very cool. Um, all right, next next question comes from a user uh, Freyr Norgal, who asks, Mac version. Uh, short answer, no. Um, I don't have a Mac <laughs> to develop on. I mean, if anyone wants to donate a, a Mac, Mac, then maybe we can make it iMac, happen. You know, like big one. Yeah, but. Yeah, but I just, I personally can't afford that, um, you know, just for that functionality. Um, so, I'm sorry, I'm, you know, that, that's not a possibility at this point. If, excuse me, if a Mac shows up on my doorstep, <laughs> I'll put it together and have some fun with it and see what I can do. And probably not get too much done the first, like, week, because I don't know how to use the operating system, but... You know, um, for now, it's just not, it's not really a possibility for me. Okay. Could, couldn't you, like, I don't know if this is, um, you are, um, is in question or something like, no, I'll, I'll just cut this out. <laughs> but, um, my question was, can't you just, not just, but is it possible for you to get someone to help you work on the shaders? Like just for Mac part, just to develop shaders for Mac? That would be a really non-fluid way of working with it. I it kind of needs to be hands-on, right? It, it needs to be hands-on, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I, I don't think I could do it remotely. Not just uh, tell and, someone. And, and with that, have you have you heard of anybody successfully running, like, boot camp, being able to, to run the shaders through that? Because um, there seems to be a lot of people trying to run shaders on Mac. I'm yeah. hoping that eventually someone came up with something i don't know i mean the problems could be driver based uh they could be operating system based i don't really know in the case that they're driver based or they're hardware based there's not much that boot camp could do in, the, in mm -hmm. that situation so i don't really know lunisquis i always blended. think i'm pretty good with names but all right uh and they ask would it be possible to make regular and stained blocks or panes reflective, similar to how water and the ground when it rains look? So you could essentially have make make or have whichever uh, mirrors in Minecraft. Okay, so kind of a complicated answer, uh, imminent. Um, <laughs> so regular glass panes render in the same way that other most solid blocks in Minecraft do and leaves, they have basically a, an effectively a one-bit transparency um, alpha channel, meaning it's either fully transparent or fully opaque. Um, if I... Which effectively means that it can't be semi-transparent and have a surface that can reflect. Um, and that also, even if it could, wouldn't really be something too practical because of deferred rendering like i talked about earlier uh, regarding uh limitations with uh transparency mm -hmm. um <clears throat> stained glass is rendered um in a similar way that water is um and that you can sort of have transparency plus like it's not a one bit transparency channel it it can have some transparency and let some light through but 
deferred rendering doesn't handle transpar transparency very well with that. Um, but it could do reflections. I mean, that's definitely something I could do with that. Um, but mirrors, not quite possible with screen space reflections. I mean, uh, the way the screen space reflections are right now with, with any objects in the game, um, actually besides gold blocks or iron blocks, but those have a nice normal map to distort the reflections and hide any sort of problems with that. But as in like a flat mirror, not not really a possibility. Um, that would require something called ray tracing, um, which is just not really possible in real time on the GPU. Um, uh, I solve many and many games solve that problem by doing a screen space ray tracing, which basically means that you can't reflect objects that are not in the scene or directly visible in the view. So if you're looking straight on at a mirror, you're not going to be able to see things behind it like you would expect to. Um, or you wouldn't be able to see your reflection because the exactly. character isn't being rendered. Exactly. Um, that's somewhat acceptable with most surfaces because of the Fresnel effect, as I was discussing earlier. The Fresnel effect basically is that the more grazing of a viewing angle you have on a surface, the more reflective it is so um that kind of helps screen space reflections because the more grazing of an angle you have on a wall it's more likely that you're going to be seeing other things besides the wall that that are going to be there to be reflected um so it really helps in that regard but but mirrors mirrors do not um show the fresnel effect very much at all meaning they're just as reflective head-on as they are from a grazing angle which means that it's going to show even even more so the flaws of screen space reflections. So it's not really a possibility as far as like mirrors in Minecraft. Mm -hmm. And maybe reflective uh, glass panes if I move to a uh, forward render. So. All right. Um, so the uh, second question is, do you plan to update parallax occlusion mapping? Uh, to work again without visual artifacts in 1.7. Um, yeah. So the thing about yeah. parallax occlusion <laughs> mapping is that I need to... Um, the shaders needs to know what the pixel dimension is of your, um, of your resource pack. So, you know, 32, 64, 128, um, 256, 512, whatever. Um, and... It needs to know how many textures are in the resource pack. Um, mm -hmm. Those two things are, are things I can tune manually per resource pack, but I it's not I don't there's no automatic system for that at the moment, and that's been the primary um, thing holding back parallax occlusion mapping. Um, I think what I'm probably going to do is um, put together a set of easily changeable variables at the top of uh, gbuffers underscore terrain dot fsh that um, that determine the the resolution of your resource pack mm -hmm. and a variable the other variable that I that I explained um, and basically set up like a like a page that lists like popular resource packs um, or perhaps provides um, normal and height maps for and specular maps for those resource packs and then also includes those variables that, you, that the user would have to put in simply edit the uh, terrain.fsh file and just chain, change two numbers technically mm -hmm. um, for that. So at the at the top of the text file, I, th I think it's it's a pretty simple, it's a clunky solution, but it's really the only thing that I have so far. Like a make a shader mod a version that supports a, like a set of texture packs, like I don't know ten most popular, mm -hmm. Cardi Craft and stuff like that. Was mm -hmm. that would that be a possibility to just include ten texture packs or something? You know, or I like could actually. Packs? Come to think of it, I could actually just make a list of a, uh, a list of like resource packs at the top of the shader file with like it would be a hashtag hashtag, hashtag <laughs> define, and then space 
the name of the resource pack, um, and I could do that with with it pretty much any resource pack that has height maps. Um, and then just comment them out, which ones don't work? Yeah, just kind of? basically you would, whatever resource pack you have selected, that would be the one that you have uncommented. Mm -hmm. um, so you would choose one out of that list and simply uncomment the one that you want to use and comment out the rest of them. When I say comment, I just mean add two forward slashes in front of the of the line. Um, that that could probably work uh, pretty well with that. I think that would be really easy for people. So now, awesome. since we're throwing out ideas, <clears throat> we're all ideas people. <laughs> I think that um, what if it was a specific people included a specific gbuffers file with their resource pack that people would drop into their already compiled shaders file that the owner will be the one that can modify that instead instead of the work being on your side yeah i mean that could be that could be a solution as well the problem with that is that they could be basically distributing a an old version of a gbuffers Mm -hmm. terrain file that doesn't work with any changes i would make in the future and then you i would suppose be that would supporting that, that would still yeah i suppose that would put the responsibility on the resource pack artists um to keep that up to date mm -hmm. um but that is another option to consider so right, or if there you. was just some way that they could develop a tech a, you know some sort of text file that had information in it in some sort of easy to read format and then yeah, probably the shader mod would be the one that, to do that. Exactly, that would be a shader mod. That could go mod. into that, read that file, and then apply it to the variables. Absolutely, within yeah. the shader files. Mm -hmm. So they would just solve the problem. <laughs> We've got kind a couple of? solutions for it. So okay, just yeah. ideas that we came up on the fly. Yeah, it's just, but basically, it's once that problem is solved, once that problem is solved, it is artifact free and it looks really good. So. And it's faster than it ever was, and I added a extra fancy thing that makes it faster and look better at less faster. That means less cost. I don't, I don't know what I was going to say less cost. <laughs> um, I already said it, basically. Yeah, so. Actually, I have there a question go. tied with that, with the okay. parallax. Before, I think it was in version 10, you, act, you didn't have really a real ambient inclusion it was still kind of this kind of baked in system is that mm -hmm. right now with parallax occlusion uh, or parallax occlusion mapping in the future versions will you have more traditional ambient occlusion systems that might apply to the crevices and uh, details within those uh, when you say more traditional you mean like screen space ambient occlusion I just mean because my understanding for, for version 10 was that it was kind of like it was already in Minecraft, just tuned, in a sense. It's It's been that way for a while. Um, I, I've decided to, um, you know, if Minecraft already has a solution for ambient occlusion uh, per block, then why would I spend too many extra resources rendering my own ambient occlusion system and trying to basically gut Minecraft of its solution? Mm -hmm. um both things being costly so as far as like image quality versus computational cost it was i think the best choice just to rely on uh, minecraft's default ambient occlusion um in which case if i just continue with that choice it's not going to actually affect the crevices of like a, a, you know with a height map like you're referring to mm -hmm. um per pixel um but that honestly would be something that would would be best put in um in the diffuse uh in the diffuse oh, yeah. texture really just i mean that's you know a common texturing technique just to put ambient occlusion in the texture and whether mm -hmm. honestly texture artists realize it or not most are probably doing it already mm -hmm. so yeah the next question is what other features are you looking into implementing into SUS in the future what else could we expect um well global illumination i already talked about that a little yeah bit. Um, so cool. oh my god uh crepuscular <laughs> rays which is god rays but real and better um the good transparency shit, if i move to a forward rendering pipeline we'll see though 
Not sure on that. Um, let's see. Those are the big things on the list right now. Um, I think people like lens flares. Lens flares. <laughs> lens flares. I think that's what people like. You know, I don't know, man. It's <laughs> you're right. You're right. People love lens flares. I mean, but you can someone brought up off. a good point with me. Um, <laughs> is uh, and they said back when I, I did make a lens flare shader because I was I was really it's into cool lens, lens time, flares. Right? You know, lens flares are cool. <laughs> oh no, you Go know, on. Um, it's shiny. But you know. Someone brought up a point where, like, you know, in Minecraft, like, it's a survival game. Like, you're seeing it with your eyes. You're not... Like, it's not a camera. It's... You're, you you're Steve. Lens. You know, yeah. And you're... You're viewing the world through eyes, basically. You know? Which... Why would there be lens flare for that? I mean, so. I think the Bloom kind of... Bloom sense, takes care of that. Mm. Yeah, because with... Your eye is a single lens with some sort of fluid inside... That mm -hmm. isn't 100%, what's the word, a perfect refractive index. Exactly. There is some bit of, uh, mm -hmm. oh, man, it's not perfect. So is. the bloom kind yeah. of, in a sense, represents that because it may <laughs> reflect out what, what's, yeah. what's the problem. No, I, I just said that I don't even know what the word means because, after all, my English isn't the greatest. <laughs> so I was wondering. No, never what mind word? me. Refractive? Um, refractive in, in something you say about... Index. It's, think of like water. That has. Is that a high refractive index? I'm pretty sure. Water is not very high. It's like it's 1.33. Air is but, one. But I just mean I was gonna make a comparison between comparison like a block okay. and a piece of plastic. Water. A piece of plastic and like water. Yeah. Yeah. Water so, has a higher refractive index than a piece of plastic, which basically means that it the the, the speed of light changes in that medium more than it does in, in regard mm -hmm. to air. Mm -hmm. um, refractive in indexes, I believe, I could be wrong, it would be embarrassing if I was, <laughs> I believe it's in direct relation to the speed at which light moves inside that particular material. Um, so the speed of light does move slower in like certain, by, by very small amounts. That's why refraction and reflection happens. When when you have a barrier between lower speed of light and higher speed of light, you're gonna have a reflection going on. You're gonna have refraction going on. So, anyway, in which case, I think I used the wrong term. But in any case, the bloom in a sense makes for a realistic flare in a way yeah. uh, that you wouldn't have with uh, an eye. The next question comes from a username. Magma83, who asks, um, what is the first screenshot taken with Zeus? And what was the first beta, was the first beta rudimentary or already robust? Did I nail oh, it? Oh, no, it was very, very, very simple. And you have those screenshots, right? I have this, I'll blend them in right now. Wait, wait okay, let's, let's, cool. Um, hold, on, let me, let, hold on, let me get them up so we can talk about yeah, them. Yeah, let me pull them up too so we can talk about them, yeah. So if you're watching, you're seeing them right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They're, so yeah. the let's talk about this first one with the four corners first. here. Sorry, what? Yeah, with the whole. Let's talk about the first one with the four corners here. Okay, guys, okay. what you're seeing here right now is one of the very first screenshots. It's like you won't see that anywhere. Okay. It's a baby. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, I mean, at this stage, I have I have to give credit where it's due. I had simply added some really simple, like, color grading, and I had changed the ambient occlusion a little bit. I changed the ratio of, of brightness between the shadows and the direct light to my personal tastes. But as far as, like, implementing ambient occlusion, implementing uh, shadow mapping, that was not my role at that point. At that point... I mean, like I said, it was so new to me. I didn't even know how shadow mapping really worked. So I, I can't take full credit for these screenshots. I have to give it where it's due. Um, so Dex Nitro, really, honestly. Um, and on that note, yes, I do fully understand it now, and I have rewritten it. I, re I wrote it from the ground up over a year ago. So um, anyway, getting so to the screenshot. Yeah, yeah, so so it's good now. Like, I, I can call it my own now, but <laughs> but... With these, like, you know, it, w it would be uh, 
messed up of me not to give credit where it's due. But yeah, I mean, these are the first uh, screenshots here. Um, the sky was really pale because I, at, at that point, didn't know how to separate um, treating the sky with treating everything else. Mm -hmm. And so I, I had to make everything else a bit brighter because it was very dark. But consequently, the sky had to get brighter as well, um, which is something I learned how to fix later on, of course. And then these uh, these next few very green oh, yeah, ones Yeah, very oversaturated, were, I would say. Yeah. Um, those were, let's see, four days later, more experimenting. Um, but really, I mean, you know, to answer the question, they were very simple. I mean, you're basically seeing all the effects that were in it, um, animated occlusion and shadows, really. That's that's pretty much it. All right, the next question comes from a user called Minneapolis. Would you ever consider your own launcher that updates itself? Oh. Ooh. No, no. Um, uh, I've got so many projects going on. I don't... Uh, that would be a really big undertaking more more than most people would think honestly it, oh just like make a launcher dude it's like it's simple do it no like it, it would be a big project and i don't have the time for that and um yeah i, I mean there, there are some other reasons but really i mean if one reason covers the entire reason why i wouldn't do it then the other reasons i suppose are rather irrelevant so so no i mean i don't i don't I don't really plan on it, so. <laughs> oh, well. Sorry, Minneapolis. I guess you wanted to make things easier. <laughs> don't okay. mean to be a dick. I'm just, like, saying it like it is, you know? It's you not an insult. It's just I'm not doing it, you know? I'm just, I'm, <laughs> he's just not doing it, man. He doesn't, <laughs> doesn't want it. Gotta accept it. <laughs> Next question comes from a user that's actually fairly known in the, I guess, shader mod community, is that if that's a thing? Um, Specifically well, Facebook. Page, yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Um, he's been very helpful on the Facebook page of Sonic Gather. Um, he's also personally helping help me out um, with problems I have with the shader. Um, no other, than, it is no other than Craft Potato, thirteen. <laughs> potato. Yeah, potatoes. Potato. Potato. <laughs> Potate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, he asks, "Will you ever fix the bug with the stained glass?" The bug with the stained glass. The bug with stained glass. That sounds like name of a movie. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of issues with stained glass right now. To be honest, I mean transparency. We talked about. I talked about that earlier. Uh, I don't need to repeat myself. Um, there was there was a reflection problem with it where it was like rendering like it was water so it was like waving and stuff mm. like water i fixed yeah. that though i don't know if he's referring to that or the transparency but uh, in the case of transparency i can't really fix it unless i move to a forward renderer which i said i may consider and the reflections i've already been uh have already been fixed so but yeah. all right the uh next question comes from block attack block attacked Cool there name, right. Block Attack. Would you ever consider live streaming uh, on Twitch or Justin.tv, for example, some of your work? I would, I, I would consider that. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, it. You know, I've never really been the type to want to show off or or seek attention really i mean the shaders mod is an exception to that um my intention for sharing it was simply because i thought other people would enjoy it and i suppose in the same mindset if i know that there are other people out there who would enjoy seeing a live stream like that then you know like let me know in the comments you know if people out there want to see that then I would feel it would be enjoyable for me to share that. But simply just 
out of my own because I think it would be interesting and and I want people to watch me. I, you know, it doesn't really cross my mind with in that regard. But yeah, if if people want to see it, I might have some fun with it, and you know that would. I think be a cool way for people out there who are learning how to program uh, or to make games or anything like that. Anything that I happen to live stream, uh, it might be a cool opportunity for someone to see how I work and apply that to their work or, or use it, you know, learn from it. And that would be a cool opportunity for me to help someone out in that, in that regard. So. All right. Well, you also have a YouTube channel. Would you also consider doing like videos, something like more than your yearly videos? That yeah, <laughs> I I have tried actually, and I just end up hating them and deleting them. But I really should. I I should make more videos. I I want to make more more videos showing off effects like my global illumination. I actually started one and had a roadblock and kind of just forgot about it. Um, Roblox with the actual making of it or the yeah, I think, themselves? No, with the actual making of the video. I think I couldn't figure out... My colors were ending up different in my recorded fraps footage than mm -hmm. they were in-game. That's something you can help me with. <laughs> yeah. I actually had that so, problem, I, to say. I think I figured it out. Okay, yeah. Um, well, anyway, so that didn't happen. And I do try making videos. Like I tried to make a vlog, and I hated it, and I just deleted it like oh, i hated it so <laughs> <laughs> oh well you should make let's plays yeah let's, oh, let's yeah. just make let's plays together hey what's up um, guys it's sonic together today we're gonna play happy wheels <laughs> oh no <laughs> so today cool. we're gonna play elder scrolls i'm ter terrible Five. terrible horrible whoa <laughs> <laughs> spoonerism for oblivion have you tr ever tried watching someone play that game, Oblivion? No. Yeah? It's so boring. It's one of the worst games to watch, in my opinion. Anyway, tangent. It takes a special personality to produce that. Not <laughs> anyone can, can play through that and try to make it interesting. Yeah. Right, next question comes from a username uh, SpartanSK117, who asks, Have you ever considered doing the Minecraft videos, for example, showcasing updates and commentating over it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have, and I've tried, and I didn't like him, and I felt self-conscious, and I deleted them. But I, I do want to share that more, because that's something I enjoy seeing. Like, I'll just look that up on YouTube, like, real-time global illumination, voxel cone tracing. Co voxel cone? I can't remember. Sounds pretty familiar, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, screen Sounds space better. reflections ambient inclusion things like that i i like seeing those videos that people share where they create a shader effect and they share it um and they you know give like a the hardware they're running it on the frame rate and stuff like that um i would like to do that i just so many things going on man and it, it, those videos take a little more work than than expected and then i end up hating them but i, I could do them for you there you go <laughs> but you, you need go. to pay him he doesn't have any money man Brett, you're kind of out what? of luck. <laughs> Dude, like, we are both out of money. Everyone's yeah. out of money. Everyone's out of money. The whole world is out of money. <laughs> <laughs> right then, this... Um, now we come to our last question. Oh. You want to read it? Uh, if I had it. Oh, you don't have... Oh, all right. <laughs> I don't well, I wanted to read it anyways, so... All right. Let's all right. see... Good for you. Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Ne last question is, um, which comes from a username, Mr. Lithid, who asks, um, what is your favorite sandwich? Hmm. A, a burrito. What? Is it a burrito? I love burritos. Those are kind of like a sandwich. They're like, they're like, Mexican sandwiches, right? You threw me a curveball. <laughs> I did. Isn't it? A burrito. Because that's not what I remember. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we 
we practiced answering this and I said something else, but I just changed subway. my mind. Subway. You Burrito. said Subway. I said Subway before. I said, oh, I really want Subway now. Oh. Me too. Me three. Yeah, well, dude, I did, first I did thing Subway this. yesterday, so. Yeah, I know, right? Let's all go. Let's all go, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 be, I'll be there in 14 hours. Yeah, if my flight gets. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. I'll keep, I'll keep it in the microwave. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. So I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, then what about we'll, you, Sir Brett, Chris? You can answer that one. Uh, that's a good question. I'd never really consider it. I, uh, I don't know. It's a tough one, right? If, if we can, if we can count burgers, right? Yeah. I think, yeah. I think it counts more if than a burrito. If I can count a burrito, then you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, probably. Actually, probably the uh, the burgers from Five Guys, a bacon I've double never cheeseburger. Had. Come, I've never had man. Well, I guess I guess they have them in Arizona, right? We they do. There's one like a no, couple blocks away, and I've go. never been to it. Save up some ad fly money, <laughs> go <laughs> and get. Actually, what you could do is you get a large fries and nothing else, because that'll fill you up. Because really, they they take a bag and they just shovel the fries in the bag, and it's like, like that, that sounds. Cool. Best, best, part, best part is that the fries aren't quantity over quality. Each fry is delectable. It's amazing. Huh. They like double fry them so they're crispy and soft. They're also wide cut. Oh, I need to go now. I, I, I would imagine <laughs> this being where you hold the bag and the oil starts like running out of the bag. <laughs> like it's very gross. You just hold it. And so you know it's good. <laughs> <laughs> The right. best part is they have a small little cup, but that big that they pour the fries in. That you're supposed to get the fries in. They put it at the, the at the bottom of the bag. And they, just they just show it the in. Bag the up. Oh <laughs> so man! You awesome. go down to the bottom, and there's this little cup of fries. <laughs> awesome. It's perfect. People are lazy there, right? It's value. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's like twelve dollars for a meal, but you get enough food for three people. So, it's America, right? American values. Exactly. You pay too much for something you can't eat. <laughs> there it is right there. Nailed it. All right. Well, um, I guess this sums up the interview Q slash q and I hope you guys had a blast in, uh, watching this. Maybe got a few new things you learned about. The um, three people left watching. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> for, for the five Which people who still are here watching this. Second part yeah. after I don't know which how long did it take is it, is it I think the second part is two hours now, or something like Ooh. that. I think. Uh, well, anyways, <laughs> I'll go the fuck to sleep because it's nearly four in the morning. Oh so. yikes! Oh god, I feel horrible. <laughs> to give people um, an right. idea, that's like five hours later six. than six. I, I no wait, I was I was saying that it was. <laughs> Because you wanted to end at like eleven. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, my what, what we were planning is to start at I don't know like eight o'clock, seven o'clock. Nine, um, I think. Uh, nine, nine was max. Yeah. Yeah. And to just you know two hours something. Now we're sitting here. It's four in the morning. <laughs> we started at like um, eleven thirty or twelve or something. Yeah, like something like that. So you see how much effort I'm putting into this video. So please, you he know, is dedicated. I'm dedicated. Yeah. <laughs> I was. It, I had a blast. It was. Um, Fun this time, so yeah. And the other time, and, yes. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, it's do you worth have the review. I, yeah. Do you have anything to say before we finish this no. off? Thanks for watching. Yeah, I hope I hope um, you all enjoy watching it. Alright guys, I need to yeah. like take a frigid bath.